Hello YouTube, time for a video again. Right, today's video, all I'm going to do is like, uh, just go through what's gone on in the, what's gone on in the, in the fish room today. I'll just show you, yeah, what's gone on this, not today, this week. And also, a couple of my favourites for 2020. So, uh, this is Wolfie, as you uh, know, this week that they've spawned in here again. You probably can't see, but uh, she has not come out of that pot. For, for quite a number of days, so I'm expecting to see free swimming fry any time now. Anyway, uh, well, I'll show you, like I just said, I'll show you a couple of my favourites and what's been going on this week. Let me put my face next to Wolfie so you can see how big he is. 20 inch. Anyway, uh, without any further ado, let's get on it! Right, we'll start here with uh, Crazy Joe's Tank. A bit of an update on Crazy Joe's Tank. Well, uh, all the regulars will know that they, uh, these were divided up uh, a month ago and uh, they the spawned. And as you can see, all the wigglers are up and running now. They're all uh, free swimming. And I did... Uh, I wasn't sure whether to keep any or not, but uh, I did make the decision... Oh, look at Blondie. She's looking really nice, isn't she? Yeah, I made a decision. Anyway, that's a little refuge. It just goes to show it does work. He can't get in there because of the big rock in the end. Yeah, well, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, I did make the decision to save some of the uh, fry. So I'll, uh, I'll show you them in a while. There, she's coming back out again now. She can go in and out there at any, any time just in case uh, the, uh, it all goes bad. But up to now... It's been going really, really well. So, like, I'll show you, I'll show you uh, the fry. I only took a small few out because it's pointless growing loads and loads of fry out because you can't get rid of them. You can't, I can't get rid of them. It's uh, very difficult to to sell on. People want nice, big, established fish and not prepared to grow the fry on. Anyway, let's uh, let's sh move along. Right, I moved over to the uh, Red Devil, Botoxomania, 14 inch Red Devil. Get some pellets in there for you, boy. Get them pellets down, yeah? Yeah, I've moved over to the Red Devil and female Dovi tank. And the reason for that is, they've got a new tank, mate. Yeah, they've got a new tank, mate. A little one, four inches. So, do you know what the tank, mate, is? You guessed it, a convict. So, like, in the fish room, I always like to keep a tank cycled up, ready for, if anything happens, hospital tank, a growing fry tank, any tank you like. I always like to keep a tank cycled up, and I normally put a convict in it. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I needed that tank for the umbrifium fry. Let's see if we can see that convict. I'll put an extra tube in there. She's got her refuge there. He'll, he'll come out, he's been out, he's been out all day, there on the left I see a little bit of it, yeah, he's been out all day, there he is, oh, I love it, you've got to love a convict, haven't you, the most adaptable Central American cichlid, in my opinion, yeah, they're so adaptable, born survivors, born survivors, it's, it looks very small next to this 14 inch red devil and the female 12 inch Dovi, but it doesn't seem to be phased. He's out there. Get some get some food down, you love. I'll just put a bit of cod in there. I like to give her bits of meaty food now and again, a bit of cod, a bit of prawn. But I tend to avoid the male Red Devil getting any. Yeah, so uh, the convict's in here, and it's uh, freed, up, freed up my tank for the Umbrifrium. Umbif umbrifium fry. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? So this tank's uh, getting quite uh, 
an interesting tank to sit and watch now. It's got three fish in it. And they're all getting on they're all getting on very, very nicely. So that, that convict uh, he'll he will just he'll he knows he knows his place. He'll get plenty of food. He's brave, isn't he? Like I said, uh, I think they're the most adaptable adaptable Central American cichlid out there. I, I use them to keep in my tank cycled up in my shed. And they just make a nice addition. They just make a nice, a nice addition to a Central American community type tank. Anyway, I'm going on a lot with this one, ain't I? I, bet, I better move on. And we'll uh, have a good look at those uh, fry outside. Anyway, she, she ma she's making use of this uh, cave. What I've made her. Same again. The male can't get in there, but he can. Anyway, let's have a look at these fry and get on it. I don't... Right, here's the unbrithium fry. They're doing really, really well. There's, I don't know how many years. I just siphoned some out with a tube into a jug and put them in here. And the, as far as new, new uh, free-swimming fry go, these are quite uh, fat. They've all got fat bellies, and they're loving that sponge filter, all feeding off the sponge. You can't beat having a sponge filter in a fry tank. All the debris food sticks to the sponge, and they uh, feed off it. I make my own fry food, but I'll show you how I do that in a later video. Also this week in the fish room, these dovi are spawning again. The blue dovi and the uh, the red morph female. So, uh, yeah, like this is the second time they've spawned, but last time I left the fry in a little bit too long and they uh, ate them all. A bit complacent. You can never tell what's going to happen. Oh, look at the blues on him. He's gorgeous. You can never tell what's happened. Sometimes the parents will bring them up to a really, really large size, and another time they'll turn around and eat them. So this time I'm going to be a bit quicker and get some out and uh, raise one or two of them. Yeah, so that's what's been going on in here. They could just see her there. Do you get a glimpse of a spawning tube? There, I just see a spawning tube on the top of that hole in that pipe. Yeah, so this time I better get on it. Let them get on with it. A bit of time lapse for a few seconds. And then we'll move on and have a look at some of my other fish. Right, this is the, the little dovi, what I call Fanta. For 2020, this is one of my favourite favorite fish. And I'll show you my other favourite fish for 2020 after this. Yeah, I just love this little fish. So, uh, where was we? I'm oh, talking about pulling the fry out. People have often asked me, when is the, the time to pull the fry out? When is the best time to pull the fry out? Well, I can't tell you, because each individual parent is uh, different. Some, some will grow the fry to a lovely size. Some will grow the fry till they're blooming two or three inches long without even touching them. Some will turn around and uh, eat the fry after a week. Some after a month. You know, it's all different. So uh, what I would tend to, if people ask me, what I would tend to do is do what I've done with the umbrifium, is just take a, a small percentage out, leave half with the parents, and say take half out. Then you've got the best of both worlds. And uh, what I'll find, the ones with the parents do grow quicker and faster initially. But by taking some out, if the parents... Uh, yeah, by taking some out, if the parents turn around and eat them, you've always got a backup. So that's what I would do. You can never predict what's, what's going to happen, especially when they're new. So there's no fast rule. It's just trial, trial and error. Yeah, so a uh, little Fanta here. I don't know if it's a male or a female. It's got a fat belly because uh, it's a uh, very, well, it's very hungry fish. <laughs> it's always hungry. So Fanta is one of my favourite fish for 2020. Let's move on and have a look at one of my other favourite fish for 2020. Can you guess what it's going to be? It's not a monster by no means, but it will be one day. Let's move on! Right, this is one of my other favourite fish for 2020. This uh, lovely little bean eye. Oh, God, I wouldn't believe how uh, interactive he's getting. He's, uh, you know, he's getting... A, he doesn't look too big on this video, but he's actually getting a decent size now. It's probably about... 
seven inches, maybe eight inches. Doesn't look it on there, but I wouldn't have thought that it would be such a interactive wet pet because this tank is in a high traffic area. It's in the corner in the hallway when I go from the hallway into the utility area. And there's, it's high traffic. Uh, people backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So when I first put him in this tank, he's been in it, he's been in it a year now. Yeah, a year in February. Yeah, I, don't, I can remember exactly because I know why. Because it's my birthday's in February and I got this tank for my birthday. Yeah, so uh, when we first put him in, for the first couple of months, he was hiding in this cave and he would hardly come out. But uh, now he's so interactive, especially when food's concerned. Look at him lot. Oh, he's so, so, uh, he's so greedy. This is a little piece of cod. Yeah, so uh, I don't mind giving him protein like cods and prawns and mussels and all them sort of things. People say don't feed, feed him on them, but as long as he ain't stressed, if you've got a stressed fish, you don't want to be giving him high protein. But uh, he's not stressed now, he's loving life. He feeds on the uh, pellets most of the time. Anyway, when I drop this in, you've got to be careful with your fingers. Like, he, he missed me then. Yeah, he'll, he'll nearly jump, he'll take it out of your hand. Jump out. He'll jump out to get the food. And he's, he, look at his colours. He's absolutely beautiful. Yes, yeah, so one of my favourite fish for uh, 2020. Let's get, give him another piece. Here he goes. Don't, there, did you see that? Oh, he's lovely. Wet pet. Right, we've moved f f from the B9 tank. And... Uh, Right, the Jaguar tank. So this week, I've had another batch of fry. I cannot believe how prolific these Jaguars are. I mean, most people will say the convicts are so easy to breed and prolific, but I think the Jaguars are equally, well, well mine are anyway. Yeah, they breed that often. In fact, too often, I think it's taking its toll on the female. The female is looking quite scrawny. I think all her energy and all the food what she's eating is being uh, transferred into producing spawn. But, uh, you know, like I say, the, the, I cannot b believe how often they breed. There's a lot of white spawn in there. But uh, I get this every time with these. these. But uh, when they do hatch, obviously not the white ones, when the fertile ones hatch, there's absolutely thousands of them. I don't think I can actually see how many there actually is in that pot. But when they, when they come up and free swim, there's thousands of them. Well, th this, this pair normally keep the fry only for about two or three weeks, and then all of a sudden they disappear. Anyway, about time to wrap this one up. Right, time to wrap this video up now. I, I hope I haven't gone on too long. And... Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity like to thank all the subscribers and thank everybody for watching and all the support. And like, if I don't get a chance to upload before New Year, I'll take this opportunity also, also to uh, wish you uh, all the best for 2021 and a ha happy New Year. Let Wolfie wish you a happy New Year. Come on, Wolfie. Uh, wish the viewers a happy New Year. Yeah, I hope 2021 goes really, really well for you all. And let's hope it goes a lot better than 2020. So until the next video, happy fish keeping to you all. Ta-ra!